Hello everyone, and welcome back to the SNES in Chronological Order, the series where I play every Super Nintendo game in US release order for an hour and tell you what I thought about it. The last episode was honestly a little difficult to make, due to it being a bunch of games that I didn't really care about, but this episode is extremely exciting, as today we're going to be talking about Contra 3, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and Top Gear. I'd say this is the best release month we've had since the launch of the Super Nintendo, and will honestly be hard to beat moving forward. We have a bunch of games to talk about today, so let's get started with Raiden Trad. Raiden Trad is unfortunately a lot more D-Force than Earth Defense Force, and I don't just mean because it's a vertical shooter. This feels like another really low-effort arcade shooter. There are two shot-type upgrades that I found and a couple missile-style upgrades that you can get in addition to your shot-type upgrades. There don't appear to be many continues from what I can tell, but I also think the SNES Classic may have been causing some visual glitches in this game, so I can't be sure. Either way, there's a bunch of enemies that pop up, but I'm writing the script and can't remember if the enemies have different bullet types, and the backgrounds as I was playing felt pretty repetitive. To clarify what I mean by that shot type line, I'm pretty sure every single enemy in this game had the exact same bullet type for two stages. That's just simply not acceptable for a console video game. Anyways, picking up an upgrade that changes the color at the last minute giving you the wrong shot type is very annoying. I am indifferent to the art style of this game and can't remember what the music sounded like, so I guess it wasn't bad, but there are much better arcade shooters out there for the Super Nintendo. Play Earth Defense Force or Gradius 3 before you even think about picking this up. So I was really confused when I started playing Super Adventure Island because it seemed identical to Wonder Boy, an old game franchise whose first game was an arcade style platform. But it turns out that on the NES, Adventure Island was a port of Wonder Boy and they just kept the name change and made the franchises very different afterwards for some reason. I'm pretty sure I've watched a video on this topic before and forgot how closely related the franchises were, but I was befuddled for a while after playing this game. This is a pretty simple platformer, very similar to Joe and Mac. It has some weird physics where it's a very specific momentum threshold for your jump height that doesn't feel good to me, but is almost impossible to explain unless you play the game. You have very linear stages that require a little bit of memorization if you actually want to make it through, especially with some of the enemy placement. I thought this game was kind of fun, but I'm honestly really not sure how you're supposed to beat the first boss, as the whole weird jumping physics thing really causes a problem with dodging the first boss's primary attack, which is this fire tower that goes towards the left or right of the screen. Uh, Super Adventure Island is really alright, but doesn't do enough for me to want to dig into it any further at this point. World League Soccer is a soccer game, I guess? You'll have to bear with me, I only know the most basic things about soccer, and this game feels incredibly bare bones as it is, so I'm not sure exactly how to evaluate it. I played a couple games of the United States, as I'm an American. There is a shorter one gameplay, where each half is three minutes, and there's league play with a battery save, where you can play as multiple teams, I only picked America just for sake of testing out the game, which is cool. This game has a viewpoint that looks a lot like Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball, but I think these graphics look a little better. I don't know. Uh, after watching my footage back again, I'm not actually sure. I think you know, it's about the same quality. This game is also incredibly easy. All I had to do to score was grab the ball, do a little bit of a serpentine to dodge the AI that tries to constantly tackle you even though penalties exist in this game, and then try to score a goal. I think the most annoying thing about World League Soccer is the goalie can just take the ball from you if you get near him. The physics of this game don't feel like they were thought out much past, oh, this acts kind of like a ball. Uh, these people run kind of like people. This game feels more like a proof of concept as opposed to an actual soccer game. It, it, it's playable, but it doesn't do anything I think is that amazing. You don't need to go out of your way to try this game out. 
I do not know exactly how to describe what Zardian is, so I'll just tell you how the game appears to work and you can work out what you want to call it yourself. The game is primarily a platformer with shooting mechanics. You're in control of three mechs that you can rotate through at any time. Each of those mechs has its own experience value and can level up. Leveling up increases the length of your health bar and the amount of ammo you have for special attacks that I never really ended up using while I was playing. Each of the mechs does their own thing, with the main mech Triton being able to aim its shots up. Alcades, or Alcides, sorry I don't know how to pronounce that, has a shot and a melee attack in one, but can't shoot upwards, and Panthera, which is lower to the ground and can crawl into lower areas for various reasons like hitting a switch, and also can shoot. Uh, I will note about Panthera is Panthera's jump looks like an attack, but is definitely not if you hit something while you're jumping. You just take damage. Anyway, all of these mechs feel not very good to control. The jumping in the game feels pretty bad, and I don't love the way the levels are designed. They just don't seem very interesting from the two full levels that I've seen. The last mechanic I haven't talked about is you pick up items as you navigate through the levels, and these items and your experience don't go away when you die. Dying actually seems to not mean anything in this game. You restart a stage when any of your mechs lose all their health. Also, when this happens, none of your mechs regain their health, which sure is a game design decision you can make. If it isn't clear what that means, it means that if all of your mechs are low health, the best thing to do is to lose a level with each mech in sequence, so you can start the stage fresh with full health on all of your mechs, since I can perceive literally no repercussions for dying. The enemy designs in this game are uninspired. They look kind of like Power Rangers villains, to be honest. And I, I don't mean like Power Ranger villain designs are bad. I mean, they look like they're stolen from Power Rangers. And the combat does not feel good. Ultimately, boss fights boil down to how much you can shoot the enemies faster than they can shoot you. Zardian feels like it's trying to be something like Superman Metroid a couple years before that game exists, so I can appreciate what they're going for here, but the implementation really didn't grab me. I spent so much time talking about this game because I thought what it was trying to do was pretty interesting, so check it out if it seems appealing to you. Just don't expect the best game you've ever played. True Golf Classics Pebble Beach Golf Links is identical to True Golf Classics Wildlife Country Club in almost every way, except you can pick a caddy named Dog now, and the course is different. And, uh, 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 sorry, I forgot. There is music playing during the gameplay now, which is not something that was in Wildlife Country Club. If you want to know how I feel about this game, check out my November 1991 episode of this series after you finish this one. Also, that episode has Final Fantasy IV and Final Fight in it, which are much much more interesting games than a 30-year-old golf game. Contra 3 The Alien Wars is the kind of hyper-difficult game that I can get behind. Don't get me wrong, it's frustratingly hard, you die in one hit, and the game is constantly trying to kill you. It will kill you in ways that feel like bullcrap, but I think this game is incredibly fun. It looks great, it sounds great. Games like this are why it's so disappointing that Konami is what it is today because they used to make great games like Contra 3 and Super Castlevania 4. The first stage that you encounter is a fairly standard City Armageddon stage, and I feel like the thing this game does best is just constantly throwing new things at you that you have to react to quickly. Usually, me adapting means that I died and had to replay the stage to actually not die to whatever I died to before, but you get my point. You pretty much constantly need to be paying attention to what is happening around you to make sure you don't get hit by something you may or may not know is coming. The game has decent checkpoints in my opinion. At first it felt like they weren't liberal enough with them, but I was able to solve my own mistakes fast enough to not get too frustrated with repeating the first stage, which usually kills a game for me as I figured out making this series. The second stage is pretty weird as it's top down and it's hard to understand exactly what's going on visually, but the second stage is actually 
exploration based where you have to blow up the alien armored stations on the map before fighting this incredibly frightening boss. Something I'll add in here is the way you rotate your character in the top down stage is with the L and R buttons, which was one, something I had to figure out, and two, it didn't feel intuitive or great at first, but eventually I got there and started to understand what was going on. You can also duck to dodge bullets in this stage, which is uh, kind of a cool touch. The third stage is where I ended up getting a bit too frustrated with the game during my play session and ended up quitting. There's nothing too unfair or anything there. I just personally find it difficult to constantly be reacting to surprises all the time like you have to while playing this game. If you've never played Contra 3 before and you want to play a Super Nintendo shooter, I think it's really difficult to beat something like Contra 3, especially if you have a friend to play with. I think playing this game co-op would be incredibly fun and make the brutal difficulty a little bit more bearable. Keep in mind that continues are limited and there are no passwords, so the only way to beat this game without save states is to simply spend time to actually get good at it. I didn't write this in my script, but there might also be cheats to skip levels, because you know that used to be a thing in video games, but I don't know if that's the case for this game. Moving on. As a dumb child, I would constantly play the intro sequence to The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past until I, for some reason, would never understand that I need to go talk to other people to actually get the story to advance. I don't think it was because I had trouble reading or anything, I think I was just a really stupid kid. This game feels ahead of its time when you directly compare it to pretty much any other Super Nintendo game that is out as of April 1992. The music sounds much better than most other games, the sprite work rivals that of games that come out for the Super Nintendo years later. It kind of blows my mind how early this game came out in the Super Nintendo's life cycle, just considering how popular this game is now. You'd think it was later in the Super Nintendo's life cycle, considering how game design typically advances across a console's life cycle. I am so sorry, I said life cycle so many times there. I know this may be hard to understand if you aren't doing exactly what I'm doing with this project, but this game simply feels great to play. Controlling Link feels way better than most games I've played. Getting access to new items and tools consistently, even across the first hour of the game, feels good, and every tool seems to have an obvious use. Navigating the UI doesn't feel like you're trying to use an Apple II computer. Exploration is generously rewarded, but if I had to have a small, tiny complaint that wasn't even really a complaint, death does not feel very meaningful, which at this point, I don't really care about giving how inconsiderate of 90% of the games I've played for this series have been. To give a specific example if you've never played this game before, at the end of my play session I was a little lost as to what to do to finish the first real dungeon in the game, so I ended up doing a bit of useless wandering and losing a bit too much health figuring out how to get the key to the dungeon's treasure, which is the bow for your bow and arrows, if you're curious. When I finally figured it out, I was pretty much dead when I picked up the bow and died quickly after. I lost nothing from dying. I still had the bow, I still had the big key, and you don't lose any rupees or bombs for dying. I don't care about this. I think it's pretty great, actually, as I'm an old man with very little free time. But I do think some people would see that as a negative. Uh, this game's first hour is great, and if you've never played it before, I think it's a great example of what made Zelda into the incredibly successful franchise that it is today. You should absolutely play this game if you haven't, and you're interested in adventuring and puzzle-solving games. So, don't let my nostalgia for Top Gear cloud your judgment of my evaluation of this game, but when I think about a 16-bit racing game, Top Gear is what I think about. Also, Super Mario Kart, but that game isn't out yet as of April 1992. I played this game to no success a lot as a kid, so much no success that I did not remember this game had a password system when I was playing it. But in my childhood's defense, the way you put in a password is by accessing the country menu from the main menu, selecting the country you have the password for, and putting in that country's password. So it's honestly a pretty convoluted process. The way this game works is you put in your name, pick a control scheme, including manual 
manual or automatic gear shifting, and you can pick one of four cars, which each have their own attributes revolving around top speed, handling, and fuel consumption. After you do all that, you enter a race series where you have to place relatively high to continue, which I don't love because the AI can earn championship points in positions where you can't even continue to the next race, which is objectively bad game design, and I'm not going to deny that. This game feels great to me. I don't know what it is. The, the driving in this game never feels like I end up wrecking or making a mistake due to the game. It always feels like it's my fault, which I think is the most important thing for a driving game from this era. I have also never forgotten what this music sounds like over the past 25 years or so. There are only four or five songs in the game from my recollection, but they're all so great I never really cared. Let's be honest, if you want to play a racing game nowadays, not playing a Gran Turismo or a Ford Forza Horizon is probably a waste of time, but if you want to know what a 16-bit racing game is like, you can check this game out. Man, playing eight games for one of these videos is an insane amount of work. On that note, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel to continue with me on this journey through the Super Nintendo's library. If this is the first video of mine you've watched, I've got a whole playlist with every episode of this series if you'd like to see more of it. I would say what's happening in the next episode, but the series is going to be completely changing after this episode, so if you'd like to know about the future of this series and you're watching this on release, there will be a channel update video you can watch if you're really invested in that information. I'll see you next time. Have a great day!